Thank you for joining us for this Meta Research Methods webinar series video. My name is Tracy Weisgerber, and I'm a meta scientist from the Quest Center for Quality, Ethics, Open Science, and Translation at the Berlin Institutes of Health. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to develop a meta research proposal. I'll be using as an example, an example of a proposal that we might have written for one of the literature survey style meta research studies that we conducted. And I will be illustrating the characteristics of a good proposal by comparing how someone might write a weak proposal compared to how someone might write a strong proposal for each of the sections that you might include in your meta research proposal. Let's get started. So the first thing to define in your proposal is the problem that you want to address. So if I were writing a weak proposal, which I'd rather not do, I might say that I want to address problems with data visualization in published scientific research. And the problem with this answer is that it's very vague and nonspecific. So I don't know what visualization problems I'm interested in exploring or what area of science I might be interested in studying these visualization problems in. In contrast, if I were to improve this and write a better proposal, I might write that continuous data in basic biomedical scientist journals are often presented in bar graphs, which conceal the data distribution and sample size. The actual data may suggest different conclusions from the summary statistics alone. Bar graphs should be replaced with more informative graphics, such as a dot plot, box plot, violin plot, etc. So here I have a very clear statement about the overall problem that I want to address and a less good practice and then a better practice. So the less good practice being bar graphs of continuous data, the better practice that I would like to see being the dot plot, box plot, violin plot. Um, and this is going to give me a much better sense throughout the proposal of exactly what I might be looking for in my assessments. The next thing you need to know is what research has been done in the area. So with meta research, like any other area of science, we want to know what is in the literature, what others have done, what gaps exist, and how our work fits in with prior studies and may help to advance the conversation or fill unaddressed gaps. So in a weak proposal, one might write that there are lots of editorials addressing the use of bar graphs for continuous data. Clearly, there's a lot of missing information here, and the authors don't seem to know what has been done before, whether or not it was effective, and they don't seem to have a strategy for how their work might be different. If I were to write a stronger proposal, I might note that previous studies in psychology and ecology illustrate that the inappropriate use of bar graphs is common. These papers were based on analyses of a few selected journals and were published five to 20 years ago. Many papers have addressed the problem without providing data. Our paper will offer a shiny app for creating more informative plots. So here I have a clear plan for what research work has been done previously and how long ago that work was done, as well as some of the limitations that only a few journals were examined. And I also have an indicator of what a potential solution might be. So for example, a shiny app for creating better graphs. The next thing to consider is your specific research question. This should be clearly defined. In a weak proposal, I might see a research question that's vague, like how often do visualization errors occur in published scientific research? And again, similar to the first slide about the problem, I don't know what visualization problems the authors intend to examine or what area of science they are interested in exploring. In a strong proposal, I might frame the research question as how often are bar graphs used to present continuous data in original research articles published in the top 25% of physiology journals? So here I've clearly outlined what my primary outcome for the study will be and what literature I want to address when I assess that outcome. Next, if we're doing a literature survey or systematic review, we want to think about our sampling frame. This, again, may be different for other types of meta-research studies. So in a weak proposal, 
One might see something like we will examine top journals such as Nature, Cell Science, PNAS, Nature Neuroscience, etc. And this is a problem because there's no real rationale. There's no explanation of why the authors are interested in looking at these journals as opposed to other journals that they might have chosen. There's also a relatively small number of journals examined, and that means that practices could potentially be affected by journal policies or practices that are common to the editorial process of a specific journal, and we won't get a very comprehensive overview of what's happening in the literature more broadly. For a stronger proposal, I might see all full-length original research articles published during a two-month period in the top 25% of physiology journals defined according to the 2017 impact factor of the physiology category in journal citation reports. So here I have a much clearer statement of exactly what my sampling frame is, so a two-month time period and the top 25% of physiology journals. This suggests that it will be a larger sample. I'll have a more comprehensive list of journals that are covered. And while it is a field-specific set and it's limited to journals with a higher impact factor, it will still give me a broader sense of practices than if I only looked at a few selected top journals. The next thing you want to think about is your primary and secondary outcomes. So in a weak proposal, I might see something like the primary outcome is data visualization error, yes, no, and the secondary outcome is the type of visualization error. And the problem with this is that it's going to be very difficult to operationalize because we don't know exactly what we're looking for. So we haven't specified here what counts as a visualization error and what the characteristics of that visualization error are. And it's very difficult to see how we might get from these primary and secondary outcomes to a data file and a data dictionary and how we might structure our analysis. So we're going to need more detail. In a strong proposal, we might see something like the primary outcome is the use of bar graphs to display continuous data, and that will be a yes, no question. And secondary outcomes include the presence of a dot plot, a box plot, a histogram, and a violin plot. I might also collect the smallest sample size for the, or the sample size for the largest and smallest groups shown in a figure. And I might also want to know what error bars on bar graphs represent. So for example, standard deviation, standard error, confidence interval, a combination of those things, something else, or perhaps the graph does not have error bars. So here it's much clearer what my data file and what my data dictionary might look like and what analyses I might be performing. Screening protocol, how will you identify your sample? So in a weak proposal, I might write that I would identify original research articles in the selected journal. And again, we're missing a lot of detail here. We don't know how reviewers will go from journals to articles. We don't know what time period the authors might focus on. And there are other questions that are going to come up when we start to actually implement this that will create problems. For example, we haven't specified whether we will include short publication formats like brief reports or rapid reports that aren't full length original research articles. So here again, we're going to need more detail. In a strong proposal, I might define my strategy in multiple phases. So perhaps I would start by screening journals and eliminating those journals from my sample that don't publish original research. I would then need to do a PubMed search to identify all articles that were published between April 1st and May 31st of 2020 in the included journals. And I would confirm the search results by comparison to the journal website to make sure that I had in fact identified all relevant articles. I would then go into a screening phase where I would eliminate articles that are not full length original research papers that don't have continuous data or that do not have a figure showing continuous data. So I have some clearly defined inclusion and exclusion criteria. I might note that articles will be screened by two independent reviewers and disagreements will be resolved by consensus.
Again, here I have much more, much more detail about each phase of the procedure, including my exclusion and exclusion criteria, which are very important for systematic reviews and literature surveys. And those details are going to be very helpful when I start writing a detailed protocol to follow my proposal. The next is the abstraction protocol. So how will you collect your data? In a weak proposal, I might write that I would collect data on visualization errors like the use of pie charts, bar graphs of continuous data, non-colorblind safe figures, not using jittering semi-transparent points, or gradients to make all points visible. So again, there's some vagueness here. We have a lot of variables listed, and we might need to put more effort into defining what some of these things are, how they would be measured, and what would count as each of these visualization errors. There's also some other detailed mis details missing. So we don't know whether the authors are looking at the supplemental files or only the main manuscript. We don't know what the defined list of variables is. They're simply a list of things without clear definitions of what answers would be for each variable and how that variable would be defined. There's no information about who will abstract the data, how the data will be abstracted, or the training that they would need to abstract the data. And all of this makes it very difficult to assess feasibility because the outcomes are so vague. So without a clearly defined protocol, it's really impossible to do feasibility tests because everyone can end up measuring or assessing a different thing, or they simply won't know what to do and where to start. If I were to write a stronger proposal, very briefly, I might first specify the content to review. So I might say that we will review figures in the published paper as well as in any supplemental files. I might address training, so saying abstractors will complete a training set of 25 articles to ensure that responses are similar before starting data abstraction. And for abstraction, I might note that articles will be screened by two independent reviewers and disagreements will be resolved by consensus, that abstractors will follow a predefined protocol, and that the primary and secondary outcomes will be abstracted for each article. So I have a lot more detail here. What I don't have is the detailed abstraction protocol, and this is something that takes quite a bit of time to develop and is the subject for another video. You want to spend some time at your proposal phase thinking about how you will analyze your data. So in a weak proposal, you might say we will calculate the prevalence of different visualization errors. And this, again, is very vague. We don't have a clear plan about how the variables are being collected or recorded and what outcomes are expected. And this makes it difficult to determine what we might actually get out of the research study. If we don't know what data we're going to collect, it's hard to determine what we might actually do with that data once we have it. In a stronger proposal, I might note that authors will calculate the percentage of papers using each type of graph and the medium and interquartile range for maximum and minimum sample sizes, and that the study is descriptive, therefore hypothesis testing will not be performed. So here I have a clearer approach where I've thought about the different data types and how I will handle them, and I've specified that there will be no hypothesis testing because it's a descriptive study. What solutions will you offer? So in a weak proposal, you might see something like, we will provide links to papers and courses on better visualization practices in science. And this again is too vague. There is no clear link between the problems that will be identified in the meta-research study and the solutions that are proposed. So the better visualization practices courses may or may not address the problems that the authors are actually interested in. And it's not really clear whether they're confident that those materials already exist and cover the topics that they would want to address in their meta-research study. In a stronger proposal, one might note that there will be figures illustrating the problems with using bar graphs of continuous data, that templates and links to free tools and resources for creating more informative graphs would be required provided, as well as info on how to decide which graph to choose based on the characteristics of your data set, as well as how to make effective dot plots, box plots, and violin plots. 
So here we see a larger range of resources and things that are very tightly connected to the clearly defined research problem that is being examined. Always important when you're proposing a study to consider the limitations of the study in advance. So our weak proposal has a lot of limitations and it's not really possible to fully assess because the protocol is very vague and it's clearly not enough to work with to complete the study or even determine whether that study is feasible. And previous out slides have outlined some of the problems with the way that that proposal was written and the lack of detail in all of the various sections. With a strong proposal, we might note that our weakness includes that there's only one subject area addressed, therefore the data may not be generalizable to other fields. We might also note that because the sample focused on the top 25% of journals in the field, according to impact factor, which is a poor measure, the data may not be generalizable to studies in less well-recognized journals. And additionally, we might note that all journals on the list are published in, in English and indexed in PubMed. Therefore, results may not be generalizable to studies published in other languages or studies that are not indexed in PubMed. So we have a clear understanding of our limitations and how this would limit the generalizability of the data and our ability to interpret and apply the data to find solutions in other contexts. Thank you very much for joining this video, and we hope you'll join another one of our videos later.